Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my channel in 2021. Woo! <laughs> I'm so excited to be filming again for this channel and just like hitting the ground running in 2021. Who is so happy that um, that one year is over? <laughs> I really appreciate all of you guys sticking around through that really weird year and I really hope that my videos were a comfort to you during that time. I didn't really get to do a reflection video on this channel. Well, I did film a reflection video and then I realized it was super rambly and weird and I didn't want to post it. <laughs> So I thought that I would start off this year on my channel by number one, talking about my 2021 wishlist plants, and number two, talking about my planty intentions for the year, and maybe just talk about some goals in general for the year because yeah, that sounds like fun. And I'm sitting in my kitchen today. As you can see, it's a very different non-planty backdrop because it is so hazy outside. So what I'm looking at right now is an entirely white and hazy forest outside. And then the grass is still like yellow and green. But anyway, I was out the other day walking around and I was just like so shocked that the actual branches on the trees like freeze. And a lot of that is the reason why everything looks like so white i mean yeah this is my first time ever seeing this ever experiencing anything like this besides like i guess like on a long-term basis i have taken trips where it was frozen before but nothing like long term i live in this place so with that being said it's just really dark in my house right now and my sunroom is just like full of a bunch of stuff and I don't feel like cleaning it out for the video. So we're gonna sit in here today. You can see my beautiful cabinets that I painted uh, a couple of months ago when we moved in. But anyway, so let's talk about my wish list plants for 2021 because I do have a few. I mean, I feel like I do a wish list plant video like every six months or so. And some plants, like I don't end up finding them, but they're still not on my wish list. You know what I mean? Well. Yeah, I don't end up finding them, but they don't end up on the next wish list because honestly, sometimes it's nice to build a wish list because you can assess how badly you actually want the plant because yeah, there's like, once you have it written down, there's no rush to find them all at once. I think that's been like a really defining thing about my growth as a plant person because it's very easy to want to buy like every single plant as soon as you feel like you want it. But for me, usually if I wait a little bit, when I realize that I want a plant, like I'll just nonchalantly put it on my stories that I'm looking for this plant. I have a wish list highlight on my Instagram page, which I really, really suggest you guys do too, because sometimes people will find that highlight of mine and they'll message me like, hey, that, it actually just happened with one of the plants. Um, and I might be buying one from someone in the spring. But anyway, they will message me and be like, hey, I have this plant, like I'm up for trade or you could buy it for X amount of dollars, which I think is really cool. I have made a few videos, or I think at least one video about trading plants with people online. And I just think it's a really great way to get new plants, um, possibly for cheaper or just plants like from the community. Um, I think it's a really great way to grow your collection in that way. Is this scarf like super distracting? I feel like it's silly to wear a scarf in indoors make a wishlist highlight on your instagram profile because hopefully people will see it and find it and be willing to trade with you so okay let's look through my wishlist highlight so the first thing on my wishlist is the hoya carnosa gray ghost and i have a few friends that have this plant i think so i'm looking at you <laughs> no just kidding um but yeah I know, I know a few people that have this plant and it's really really beautiful i have to say my like acquisition of hoyas has really slowed down i feel like i'm pretty satisfied with my hoya collection and like i don't love hoya enough to get like i don't know like hoya 636 or whatever like there's a lot of unnamed varieties point is i'm pretty happy with my like mainstream hoyas my obovata my pubic calyx i have a polyneura i would love to get like another polyneura with like bigger leaves because the one i have is just a baby let me show you this actually grew from like this much i think the only original leaves are these three at the very very top so that's really exciting but yeah i would love to see like if i could get another one but this one is growing really well so that's exciting it just put out these two bottom leaves they're still like 
really soft. Hoya hybrids would be fun. Like any gray Hoya hybrids would be really fun. Like the Hoya compacta gray version would be really cool too. Um, but yeah, I think that's the only thing I'm really looking for as far as Hoyas go because I am pretty happy with my Hoya collection and don't want to overdo it. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, so the next plant on my wish list is the Philodendron Majestic. And that is a Philodendron Varicosum and Sotoroi cross, which like Philodendron crosses might be my favorite variety of plant like ever which like I don't know I think it's kind of funny but the varicosa melanochrysum I do have that one and it is honestly like one of my favorite plants in the world it is so beautiful I love it the leaves are so big and they have like the like depth texture that the varicosum has which was really surprising to me because the varicosum looks like it has like so much depth and texture but it really is like paper thin i was not expecting that when i saw it for the first time next on the list is this syndapsis trubii dark form and i have had a few people reach out to me saying that they like wanted to trade for this plan but i just didn't have what they were looking for so it didn't work out as a trade so i am still looking for that this one has been on my wish list for two rounds now so that makes me think like okay i definitely want this plant because again there have been plants that have fallen off of that train i did find the syndapsis trubii moonlight which is the lighter form it's like a sage green color and it is so beautiful i love that plant it's definitely another favorite I think just like syndapsis in general is really underrated and gorgeous. Okay, so next plant, Philodendron Glorious, which is a mixture of the Philodendron Gloriosum and the Melanochrysum, which is absolutely, I think it's the Melanochrysum. I'm pretty sure it's Melanochrysum. That plant is crossed with everything, which is really, really cool. Um, I think mostly because the leaves just get so big. Um, it just makes every plant, like, amazing. <laughs> it is like the Gloriosum, but the veining isn't as, like, distinct, and the leaves are more shaped like... Melanochrysum, but they're round because Melanochrysum tends to be long. This is the plant that someone messaged me about that they have like a bunch of babies that they're selling and I actually got another plant from them before. I won one of their giveaways actually. Next plant is the Philodendron Bilia TA. Yes, I've always pronounced it Billy Thai, but I think it's Bilia TA. The Philodendron Bilia TA is absolutely gorgeous. Like I love the long sword leaves like i just love how long they are this photo is from my friend michael who i've been plant friends with basically since the beginning of my instagram which is really cool but his is huge and also adam not dude has one and his is also huge and like constantly putting out new growth so that's definitely a plant that i'm looking for right now i'm um, just like hoping and praying i can find it but actually listen i did put in an order for a philodendron billy ta and i placed the order i think in like november and i still haven't gotten it and i emailed the company like it's a reputable company i think it was recommended by a friend who i trust who's like gotten a bunch of plants from them so maybe they just aren't shipping right now and it was risky to do it anyway it was risky to order the plant when i did but i was like 75 dollars for looks like a pretty developed plant i'm gonna just like try it and see what happens and i haven't gotten it yet which is a little sad but i hope that it's just that they're not shipping in the winter and not that it was a scam or they forgot about my order but yeah i need to check my email and see if they got back to me yet but they didn't last time i checked okay the next one is the philodendron florida beauty and oh my gosh this is one of those plants that i am like genuinely obsessed with i have been for a long time and i just like i remember putting the philodendron florida ghost on my wish list video and like i ended up getting one because i thought that it was the florida beauty like i've been so confused by this plant one time i bought a, a philodendron florida thinking it was a florida beauty and it wasn't then i got a philodendron florida ghost and it was not a florida beauty and now it's like finally gotten through my little pea brain that the philodendron florida ghost filled like it's all different plants so what i'm after is the philodendron 
Florida beauty. <laughs> and it's one of those plants that I follow someone, the person who's, whose photo I use, uh, Vivian, she has talked in the past about how she was always nervous that the variegation would go away, which makes me nervous to get one because usually when a plant like very easily reverts back to green, for some reason that always happens in my care, no matter what I do, um, give it a ton of light, give it like every everything that it needs to keep that variegation and it still somehow goes away. But that is just the case with unstable variegation. You know, like the Pink Princess has unstable variegation. The Albo Monstera has unstable variegation, which my Albo is still like very white, which is good. There's lots of variegation in that. So knock on wood, that doesn't change. But I feel like that one is doing a lot better than other variegated plants that I've had in the past. Like the Syngonium Army that I used to have is completely green now. And I just kind of am letting it go to be honest because it has like four leaves and they're all solid green and i'm like i have no use for this and i don't think anyone else would have use for this so i'm just kind of like yeah just letting that one go um but other than that like i don't think i have any plants that i'm really really looking for right now of course if that changes i will be adding them to my instagram highlight for my wish list and i actually have a little slide on the top of my like at the front right here and I've had people message me if they could like screenshot this and use it for their own Instagram highlight and uh, yes you can so if you want to do that and you want like a cute highlight you can definitely use this and then like use the leaf as the circle like on your page or whatever so yeah if you want you can do that but anyway so yeah, that's my wish list for 2021. I'm really excited to be looking for those plants. I'm going to let them come to me and just see what happens because I did that last year and I ended up with a lot of plants that I really love. We're gonna shift gears a little bit and we're gonna talk about my intentions for 2021 with my plants because I think it's really important to, with like every aspect of your life at the new year, look at your intentions with those things like I don't want to set new year's resolutions this year or any like big expectations because last year I think a lot of us did that as we normally do with a year and then last year was the year that it was and I think that we're all like having a trauma response and not wanting to put that much into a year and I feel like that's definitely something that I'm doing but there are a few things that I want to do in 2021, you know, namely like do some traveling once it's possible. I think that I would definitely be in the last group of people to be vaccinated and hopefully that would happen end of summer, middle of summer. Honestly, no clue at this point, but after that happens, I would love to do some traveling. Um, I really want to go to Finland for New Year's next year. Like I, anytime I have like a weird holiday season, it seems like it always happens like after I spend like time being really sad about something i decide like next year will be different and that's actually the reason that i traveled in 2017 for like 10 weeks between like over the summer between years of college i went through a really terrible breakup my sophomore year summer like after sophomore year of college and then i was like next year this will not be me and the very next year i went on a solo trip to europe and um i met my husband a few months before i left and we ended up getting married like a year and a half ago so it's just like i really love to like take those situations that are like really cruddy and be like no a year from now like literally a year from this day right now i'm gonna be going off and doing something and it's almost to like spite the last year that i do this so next new year's i spent this new year's <laughs> crying <laughs> <laughs> which is so dramatic but yeah i had a little bit of a cry on new year's i was lonely as most of us probably were and i was like next year this is not going to be me next year i'm going to be doing something incredible so i talked to daniel about possibly going to finland next new year's to see like the northern lights again and everything because the northern lights are pretty significant to us we got engaged under northern lights which is really sweet and i'll never forget that moment ever in my life and it's really sweet because well, let me just do a little tangent here, but um, sorry for the chatty video. If you know, if you're not a regular viewer, you can totally click off. It's okay. <laughs> but if you are a regular viewer, I'm just having fun catching up. But um, we got engaged under the Northern Lights, and it was pitch black, and there was like no way to get a photo or anything like that. But we did take some photos like right before with the um, lights behind us, like with long exposure on my camera. Is my first time ever doing long exposure, so it's just like not great, but whatever you can see something <laughs> um but anyway so 
there's no photos videos audio of the proposal so like I really don't even remember what he said because I was like so excited I don't even think he remembers what he said but like it's just such a sweet I feel like the memory is even sweeter because it's like in my heart and I don't have to like look back at a video to remember it because I remember how I felt in that moment and I just think like if he proposed like with a bunch of people around I would have been like mortified so I'm really glad that he knew me well enough to not do that <laughs> but anyway that was a long time ago so last year was a hard year as I've said um, as everybody knows and mental health really really had to become like the forefront of my thoughts because I was really sinking into a depression my anxiety was really like really bad honestly and I'm still dealing with those things now, but I started going to therapy, which was incredibly helpful. And I'm still going to therapy now. And I go to therapy on Talkspace, which is like an app, it's like an online therapy um, media, I don't know. And it's really, really, really helpful because with that certain like type of therapy, I can talk to my therapist every single day, twice a day if I would like, like no pressure to do that. But if I wanted to, she's available to do that. We can send videos, voice messages, texts, and then we meet online like in video chat once a month. So that's really helpful too. Um, but anyway, so that was like really the number one thing that I was concerned about this year and like my plants and my plant channel were not really priorities in my mind and heart, which I really feel like I'm in a place now where I can come out of that. And so 2021 is going to be a year of just like babying my plants so much and giving them spa days like all the time and just focusing a lot of my attention on the plants that I have and making sure that they have the best possible lives and I think also like moving into a new space has taken a big toll on all of us because it's a huge change for them and for me we're all just kind of getting used to it and like getting into our groove and I lost quite a few plants and that's totally fine but it just makes me it gives me more time to be with the plants that are still here and make sure that I don't lose those ones too because these are like beautiful memories of the last couple of years and just like my time in Tucson and just even like the beginnings of my plant journey it's just like such a beautiful reminder every single day to see them and think about that and also in 2021 since I live on a house or in a house on property so I have seven acres so I have lots of space to garden so I would love to start a vegetable garden like plant some fruit trees and also plant like cut flower gardens stuff like that I'm really really excited about and I want to plant um, actually someone sent me some seeds for what is the oh my gosh why can't I think of the plant it's the plant that monarch butterflies love milkweed Yes, um, I got a bunch of milkweed seeds from someone in the mail, which is really exciting. I do have a P.O. box now, but I don't know like if I want to put it out publicly, but you know, maybe I'll put it in my, my description box or something like that. But I don't want anyone to feel obligated to send me anything. Like that's definitely not why I got it. Um, it's just helpful if someone does send me something that it doesn't have to come to my personal address. So I want to start like a big garden outside and just like in general, bring up the curb appeal of my house because there really is not any right now. There's like a few rose bushes, but for the most part, it's like, it was clear that they didn't really care what it looked like outside and i think in the summer when i see this place like fully green and gorgeous that might make sense to me because i'm sure it's like very 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 lush and there might not be a ton of reason to add in extra plants and do all these things like in tucson you have to do that or else you literally look like you live in a prison <laughs> but here things just like naturally grow like the grass just like grows we don't have to water it we don't have to irrigate it which is such a strange concept to me that we don't have sprinklers in our yard like I can walk around without hitting my foot on a sprinkler it's just like so weird I don't think I'll ever get used to that it's such a strange concept but anyway so that's a really really exciting thing so I'm gonna be like diving into that I don't know if I'll do a ton of content on it but probably every once in a while I'll do like a garden vlog probably and just like share what I'm doing and then definitely not instruction videos because I have no idea what I'm doing but I have a lot of people to look to uh, specifically Pam from Pam's Pretty Plants she does a lot of like garden vlogs which I love so 
And then on another note, like a more serious note, I'll quickly talk about this because I talked about it on my podcast with Adam and Nicole and I just, I don't know, I don't want to talk about it too much, but basically I have a really big goal to go full time with YouTube, Dayla Plans content creation in a year. So in by 2022, I want to be fully self-employed, whatever that might look like. And like YouTube videos is not the only thing that I'm doing with Dayla Plans. So that's like kind of a relief because I don't, I think it'd be really difficult to set like numeric goals to something that I can't really control that much because with YouTube, I have no idea if a video is gonna perform well or not. You know, like it really depends on how my audience is feeling on a certain day or if YouTube really decides to push a video or not. Um, it's really unpredictable and I don't have a ton of control of that. So I'm going to continue to like add in other things so that I'm not relying on just that to make an income and stuff. I'm really hoping that I could be self-employed in a year. I really would like to go back to school, get my graduate degree in something regarding English, English literature, or even something within like English and linguistics cross section would be the most ideal for me because I think language acquisition is incredibly interesting and important to learn about and teach. So that's something that I've been thinking about a lot as well. And I would really like to do that, but I just know that at the current moment, working a full-time job, having YouTube, and doing school, like it would just not be a thing. And on top of all those things, like have a life and a husband and dogs and like garden and like want to be happy, it just wouldn't be possible. So I'm trying to think of ways that I can take that next step in my career and do another career change because I've already done a big career change and I'm kind of wanting to shift again. At any point in your life, I think it's good to have those shifts because it keeps you on your toes. It keeps you, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, I just think it's good. It keeps your your wheels oiled. <laughs> so anyway, I've been talking for a very long time, so I'm gonna wrap it up, but I wanted to say thank you guys again for sticking with me through 2020. I'm really excited to bring consistent uploads again every Tuesday and Thursday. You should be seeing my face. I have considered changing my upload days, but I think that Tuesday and Thursday is just like what I have ingrained in my head, so it'll probably stay that way, but if you are wanting more content from me, if you're wanting to support support me in different ways. I do have a second YouTube channel, which is Becca Calhoun. That's my like lifestyle and like vlog channel, I guess. Um, it's just basically everything that is not plants in my life. So I sew vlogs, I talk about my life, I talk about my dogs, I take you on adventures. Eventually when I can travel, we'll do travel videos, uh, stuff like that. I talk about everything besides plants. <laughs> So if you're interested in that, um, I'll have that. I always have that channel linked down below, actually. So yeah, and if you're looking for De La Plants Soil, the De La Tanks Soil, that's always linked down below. Uh, Pre-mixed houseplant soil for you guys, that's linked down below. Or you can find it in select retailers in Arizona and Missouri. We have it at Vintage Hill. And gosh, what else? I do have a huge project coming out sometime in the spring. I wrote a book during quarantine with a really awesome publishing company and I'm just very excited to like share that with you guys. That really, really big uh, next step is so exciting. I haven't talked about it at all because I actually didn't know how much I was allowed to share, but then I realized like I'm allowed to say that I wrote a book. So I wrote a book and it's about houseplant care and I'm just really excited to share it with you guys and um, more details on that later. I, I actually Actually, myself don't have any details like the book has been it's finished but now we're in the next stage of like looking at how we're gonna promote it and stuff so I actually don't know what that's gonna look like but when I do you'll definitely know and I think that's all so thank you guys so much for um, sticking with me and watching this video it's been a long one um, I really appreciate it and I will see you guys on Thursday bye